Hey everybody, it's Ben Strader from EFI University and here to talk to you today a little bit about some of the preparations we make to our engine blocks uh, for the engine blueprinting course. Some of you guys have been with us and been through this course and some of you are wondering whether or not you should take it. So this is just a little sample of some of the things that we're concerned about when we do the course. We took this uh, Honda K-Series engine block and we had ductile iron sleeves put in it, which is a common modification that you would do for high horsepower applications. And of course, our engine also gets used in our advanced turbo concepts course. And so because of that, we wanted to take the precautions of uh, beefing it up now, if you will. So one of the things that we look at in terms of uh, the viability of a cylinder finish to, to produce good performance, and by performance, I mean oil consumption, cylinder sealing, power level, stuff like that, is the actual crosshatch pattern that's put in there by the machine shop when they uh, match the diameter of the bore to your piston size. So obviously lots of people are familiar with talking about the uh, clearance, how much the piston's gonna expand and grow, um, but not as many people we have found have been familiar with what the surface finish should be. To understand that, when we cut the surface finish, there'll be sort of peaks and valleys that the piston rings have to sort of mate to and during the break-in process, how steep or how uh, deep those valleys and ridges are make a big difference to the engine's performance. To measure that, we use a machine that's called a profilometer, or if you think about it, a machine that measures the profile of the ridges and the peaks and valleys in the cylinder. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it in here very gently, and it has a little stylus on the end of it that will basically drag across that surface and it will measure those peaks and valleys and it will give us a bunch of different information about uh, the reduced peak height, the reduced valley height, the average roughness, the root mean square and so there's a lot of different factors there we'll talk about when you come see us in the class but for now we just wanted to give you a little demonstration of how a profilometer works and how we're going to use that information. So now that I have it set in the bore ready to draw, drag across there I'm just going to hit start and stop and it's, the machine's going to do its work. So while it's happening, I don't want to be touching the table and rocking the block or anything like that. Um, but while it's taking that measurement, it's going to be plotting out those, those uh, a picture, if you will, mathematically of those peaks and valleys. Um, and then we'll use that to determine the acceptability in terms of, you know, the deeper the grooves are, the more oil that will be retained. And so the more lubrication the engine will have if we don't get them deep enough or if we get them too deep, uh, it affects the uh, crosshatch angle then affects how much the rings want to turn in there and so, so on and so forth. And now that we've got an average here, um, the machine's done, we'll just hit print on the thing and it'll print out a little report for us. Now that it's printed out, I can tear it off and I can see that for this particular cylinder, and I'm measuring at the bottom of the cylinder, it gives me uh, an RA, an average roughness of that surface of 8.2 micro inches or 8.2 millionths of an inch. And that's pretty acceptable because we're looking for somewhere between, oh, about uh, 10 and 20 would be great. Uh, as low as 6, as high as 25, somewhere in there would be good. And uh, remember, that's just the average, though. And so it doesn't tell us the whole story. We're, always, we're also going to be looking at the average peak height and the average valley height. Because two cylinders with the exact same average number might perform totally differently if I simply had a deep groove in one and a shallow groove in the other, but the one with the shallow groove has higher peaks. And so we don't want to look at just the average, but the entire values. And when you come to the class, we'll talk more about that. But for today, just wanted to show you some of the work that we do in preparing to put these engines together. Thanks for your time.